so I haven't put any new content out on this channel for like, the last few months uh, and the reasons for that is I've been in deep contemplation, deep meditation, deep studying and basically needed a lot of time to myself. To come to a certain conjunction within my own self, which took a lot of reflection along the way. But today I'd like to talk to you about the primordial, the primordial abyss, the primordial darkness. Now, because of a lot of uh, what I would say Christian programming and New Age programming, our idea of darkness is something what we consider evil, negative, uh, and of the devil. I'm not a Christian, and I'm not a New Asia, no, neither of those things apply to me. <clears throat> to me, the primordial darkness is Gunulagap. within <coughs> the Norse Germanic law, but also Nun, within the Kemetic Egyptian law, and also Chaos, within the Hellenic Greco-Roman law. And probably there's other versions of them through other forms of ancestral law all around the globe. But I like to, I'm going to compare these three mythologies the Germanic, the Norse, the Kemetic Egyptian, and the Hellenic Greek or mythology to kind of get a better understanding. So, Gunun Gap, the gaping void from which all things came, Ymir being the first being into existence. Ymir was the first physical being, and out of his physicality, he was broken into pieces by Odin, Vili, and V, the creator triad. Now we compare that we compare this to the Kemetic Egyptian Nun, the watery abyss. Out of Nun came Atum or Atum Ra. And also Shu and Tefnut. Shu representing air, Tefnut representing heat, moisture. Now, Shu and Tefnut are very similar to what? Niflheim and Muspelheim. Niflheim being the cold air, Muspelheim being the heat. We also in have Nut, sorry, Nut and Geb, sky and earth. Now on the Hellenic of chaos being the void, out of that you have Uranus and Gaia, sky and earth. Nut and Geb, sky and earth. 
my point is, is that all things come out of darkness. All things are born from darkness. The divine light is born from darkness. Darkness is the womb from which all things come and all things came. It is the primordial. However, once one stares into it, they stare into nothing. And if they stare into nothing for too long, one becomes an inner void. One must operate within the darkness, but also outside of the darkness, standing almost on the edge of it. Standing on the edge of it, but also within the physical world. So one can see into reality and engage with it. And one by one, cut away the illusions. through looking into the darkness, because the darkness reveals the true divine light. This requires shadow work. Of course, only a very few, amount of, few, few people can do this. Not everyone can. And those that can do it, sometimes end up going insane in some ways. Insane, but able to keep balance to some degree. When you go into this, and you go through the underworld to its deepest, darkest layers, under Muspelheim, under Niflheim, under Helheim, into Ganuna Gap, standing on the edge of the void. No one around you is going to understand what you've encountered within yourself. How could they? They're nowhere even near that level of initiation, and they probably will never come to it. I know this sounds daunting to anyone who's listening to this, who understands what I'm saying. But this is not just something you experience once in your life you have ever gone through this. This is something you're going to repeatedly have to go through again and again and again and again until you become so used to going into this cycle of initiation called the underworld cycle. Essentially the death cycle. Now let's get on to what death really means. I'm not just talking physical death. Physical death is just one type of death, I'm talking ego death. 
And not ego death as in your ego dies and you are left with no ego, no. I'm talking about the the aspects of your ego that need to die off in order for you to be reborn. That shedding of that ego. Because the ego so comes so clustered with things that are unnecessary and are only finite and those aspects of the ego need to be burnt out in order for you to realize your true self in order for you to do that one must go for the shadow shadow is that related to gunun gunun a gap or gap or nun, as the Kemetics like to say it. But this watery abyss of nothing, from where everything can come from. It is a matter of mastering your shadow, so that you master the abyss, so you, self, can conjure anything from that abyss. This is the Vitki, the Volva, the conjuring of such things. People ask what the so called Black Sun is. Well, the Black Sun is something. that has been debated within the occult spheres for decades now to what it really is. Now, you have certain groups like, who would like to call them properly selves, uh, Luciferians or of some stripe, who like to, you know, probably worship this black sun. I do not worship such things, but I do see the power in the Black Sun. The Black Sun, you could say, is the dark light. The light of Gunun Nagap, or the Abyss itself. And it is the Black Light, in that sense. It is the dark light. But it is the dark light, in a sense, that gives birth to the divine light, the white divine light. One cannot know the true light before they engage with the darkness themselves. Otherwise, you're going to be trapped in the false cold light, or you, or your, or you Christians, and Abraham, other types of Abrahamics, and New Ages as well. You're all trapped within that false cold light because you have not gone through the darkness. You have not stared into the blackness to understand the true divine light. And hence you're controlled by the architects who hide in the shadows. This goes into more deeper territory, I have to say. More deeper than ever before. One can look and peer into such things for only so long.
One must self, one must clothe themselves in their shadow. Embracing the black, embracing the darkness. One must not put himself too much on or too much in the spotlight. And when he does, an initiate of the shadow, of the true darkness, and I'm not talking about the darkness as in these ones that hide in the corridors of power using what limited occult knowledge that they have to control people to manipulate people well more more actually to manipulate those that are put out in front and to, are perceived as the people in power to then and then it trickles down as to, to basically controlling the masses. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about... Walking amongst the masses. Walking amongst... But not being a part of. And secretly manifesting things into this world. Almost like a shadow guardian. One who does not bring too much attention to themselves. And when he does, he does it for necessary reasons. And to not too many people either. One cannot wish to be a champion upon the masses in this work for to be a champion of the masses is to be controlled by such malevolence that hides in the corridors of power you need to become your own power We work underground, underground in, as in, we work in the underworld, in a sense, underground, but not of any literal description. Knowing yourself is of the high, highest importance. Know thyself. Which, by the way, does not originate in the Bible. It actually originates from the Neoplatonic school. Originating then from Plato himself. Plato, who was a devout pagan. who understood the Hellenic mysteries more than anyone. His works have been speculated on upon today for his contributions to philosophy. However, people think that no vice self is something original to the bible and is what the so-called people who come to know as jesus today said himself but actually it comes from plato and it was inserted in there as they inserted many of greek philosophy into the um so-called bible has become a book used for manipulation and control and to uphold a certain historical narrative 
that has plagued the planet and plagued mankind in subjugation to a false god that they have no relation to. The gods and goddesses of your ancestors are your true gods. Any other entity that is telling you to not venerate the gods and goddesses of your ancestors and only another god is a false god, not a real god. How insecure of this being to want all that attention to himself. Wanting all that attention of, sounds like a fucking narcissist to me. So one must embrace. One must bathe in the black light. One must rise. Out from the underworld of initiation into the real physical manifest and bring what knowledge they have gained back to those that it is there for. I'm not doing this for the masses. The masses are long gone. The masses will never want to listen to what I say anyway, even if I tried. And this is not even for them. I'm doing this for what I perceive as the truth. I'm doing this for in service to the divine. I'm doing this because it is my orlog, my dharma. That is my reason for doing this, not for any other. So go on. And what's ever happening out there? After all that, this fucking shit that's been happening for the last two and a half years. Nothing is going to stop me from what I'm doing. Nothing. <laughs>